It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1739, recorded Thursday, August 8th, 2019. Artsy Fartsy Gadgets. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have three gadgets from the sweet, sweet showcase. I have a sketchy gadget if you want to spy on your keyboard. And we have a few fantastic letters and warehouses all next on The Gizwiz! It's the same dumb show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for The Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for The Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And if your gadgets are your pets, here is your lead veterinarian, Dick D. Bartolo. Wow. You, <laughs> wow. you gotta stretch was... it. I gotta, I gotta yeah, get I was just creative. gonna say. <laughs> I gotta get real creative here. I don't know where where we can go from here. <laughs> and if farm gadgets were farmers, here's the watermelon keeper. <laughs> and if gadgets were spells, here's your lead wizard, Dick D. Bartolo. Here's the head smell. <laughs> well, you know, we're coming, we're coming up to 14 years in uh, yeah. February, so that's a, that's a lot of intros. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Well, how was your week? Uh, it was great. This has been just kind of a normal... Uh, the, the summer seems to be wrapping up for me, uh, mostly because school is getting back in season for a lot of kids. Um, but... So not a ton, not a ton of stuff uh, going on over here. Um, been busy. That's about. That's about it. What about you? The kids are back. Are they back in school already out there? Some of them are. It's a slow progression. Like I'd say about ten percent of the oh, kids okay. are like back in school. Okay. Um, and then throughout August, you know, by the end of August, uh, it'll it'll mostly be done. Uh, oh, okay. every, everybody's okay. back in school by the end of August, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, now that we have officially announced the meetup being here at Disneyland and moving it up a couple of weeks, so hopefully the weather will participate with us so that we can have it in the backyard. Dennis and I started getting the place ready by Ooh. putting all new vinyl and all new lights in the greenhouse. That looks awesome. It, look, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? It looks good. And then what was great was we had tremendous storms last night. And I said to Dennis, let's run out and stand in the greenhouse. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, it, it was perfectly dry. I mean, oh, it really? got wet. The way you were going with that story, I was, yeah, <laughs> no. really, I was imagining no, destruction. One, right. And there was one... <laughs> It was one part. Uh, we fixed it now with some more uh, uh, cross struts. Is there was like a big belly of water. Yeah. And, and I thought if I push up on this, it'll fall all the way down to the edge. Well, it was like a Three Stooges movie. I pushed up on it and it just managed to come out the very middle and <laughs> run totally down my back. Yes. <laughs> Ice yes. cold. My shirt was soaked. It was, yes. it was very funny. That is very uh, funny. But then after we put the extra little cross beams in there, uh, it stayed dry. So awesome. anyway, I will mention again at the end of the show, September 29th, meet very up New York perfect. City, Chad's in person. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm missing Minecraft convention thing. I don't know what they're doing this year. It's it's all virtual now. There's, there's no physical place to be, uh, but I'm oh, going to okay. be at the meetup. So could... Oh, okay, good, yeah. good. And when we'll we'll FaceTime some of it, right, right, for people who can't get here. Yeah, I'm not um, worried about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, should we excited. jump in? Yeah, let's jump in first. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Sweet Sweet is a, a big toy uh, uh, exhibit. And Chad, you, 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 luckily you're young enough. You can fit in both of them. So I went, we went with, uh, our friend Steve from, uh, NBC and Dennis, and we walk in and there's the big entrance. And now the big entrance says influences. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then God, on a pole is a little arrow press, press, press. <laughs> 
Press over there. <laughs> Influencers in neon and yes, flashing yes, lights. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So it's because they realize that influencers are very similar to press, except they don't have any of the moral qualms about <laughs> exchanging money. Oh, or, oh, that's very funny. Or, yeah, getting product yeah. for free and disclosing it. You know, that's this is fun. Oh, that that's that's very funny because they handed them big shopping bags going in. <laughs> See, and we got. Proof. We got bad, we got badges. We got little. You barely badges. got fed, probably. <laughs> they had like a whole spread for the influencers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I couldn't tell who were the kid. They let. They also let a limited amount of kids in. But I do believe a lot of the kids are influences. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. it I was. was at, I was at a Minecraft convention, uh, and this kid came up to me, and I was like, "You look so familiar." Like, and so I almost, sometimes when I see a familiar kid, I'm thinking they came through the line before and I've <laughs> forgotten them. And so that's, that's, you know, sad or whatever. Um, but he was like, hi, hi, I'm getting, and he was like super outspoken. <laughs> and like, I was just like, wow, oh, this kid is interesting. Turns out, um, it is a kid that I knew. His name is Gavin, Gavin Thomas. And, uh, here's, here's his Twitter. Um, oh my god! Half a million followers. He was oh. really popular on Vine. <laughs> he was known for his Vine videos and his parents doing all these Vine videos. So like when he was like even younger, he's oh really my... known for his like weird faces that he would do. Gosh. But yeah, like he, he could be any age and be a very popular influencer. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're saying in, in influencer. Someone yeah. say, are you, you guys saying in, influenza? No. Influenza hits at any age, people. That's right. Be, That's be the wary. doctor's convention, <laughs> and we'll be covering that in a future episode. Uh, okay, so gadgets from that show, and here's a new one from SpongeBob. Has a, a million toys out there and games, and this is one of the latest coming out in the fall. Nickelodeon, we have something new, and Ritz is holding it, and that is... This is the brand new SpongeBob SquarePants Giggle Blaster. Has SpongeBob sounds and audio, and it shoots uh, aerosol party, party string. Oh! Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> What's it going to sell for? $19.99. It comes with the blaster and one can, and he uses most uh, most sizes for refill cans. And so refill cans you can get for like a... You can get them anywhere, a couple of dollars, super cheap. It also works without the can. So again, it has uh, all the sounds that we recorded of SpongeBob. And so if you just hold the trigger, you'd hear the, you'd hear the sound. Oh, of I can hear the sound. Hear so, yeah. yeah. So this has a reservoir in there that has... Uh, oh, no, you can no, use it. Oh, I see what you said. Yeah, yeah, you still get the audio even without the can. If you're too cheap no to buy a second can. Okay, so, you need the can so, for the stream. Exactly. So it's a great indoor toy uh, with a lot of life in there. Okay, great. And I'm going to try it and... Well, maybe it's locked we'll just and loaded. all in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> and... Oh, the I can't believe he trusted you with that, Nick. Wow! Oh, Did I do God. the lens? Did I get you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Lawsuit. There you go. You got him. Got him good. Now, now we have to get a new camera. <laughs> what are we gonna do? At first, I thought, wait a minute. I totally coated the camera with that gook, but it, after a couple of seconds, it just you know peels off very right. easily. And that little thing is also uh, a periscope. The little uh, oh, giggle blaster. Interesting. Did you look through the back of it to like? You know what? I didn't. I didn't know know that. Until I was home and looking at the press release, and I said, "We were so busy squirting stuff, and the guy was uh, so busy squirting stuff. He never explained that it's also a little periscope. I believe you look in. The, there's a little in, in the video I saw. It, there's a little peephole, and you can look up and and uh, see what's going on. And That's then, awesome. as he said, there are 15 uh, SpongeBob." Uh, audio Sounds, bits yeah. that you can play in the built-in speaker. It's going to be under 20 bucks and uh, coming in the fall. Is that string, 
is that spray the consistency of silly string or is it? Yes, it exactly. A little wet, but maybe that's just because it, it, was it fresh. did look wet. It did look wet, but it is silly string. And, nice. and he said you can get any brand and uh, it will fit in the gun. Perfect. He also said sometimes the dollar store has silly string. Yes, it does. So, in Walmart. And, uh, also, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Crayola, they always come up with new interesting stuff. And here's something new from them. Hey, you know the folks at Crayola always come up with really oh, I just said the same thing. So look at these two guys here. Is there an what echo if in your here? kids could make art like that on the kitchen table, and you are saying, "Oh my God, what on, a mess!" Not well, on my table. It's Crayola, and they figured out a way for it not to be a mess. And Erica is going to show us how it works. This is the gadget. This is called Sprinkle Art Shaker. So what you do is it comes with six different line art sheets inside. It also comes with five different glue sticks. And you take your glue and you outline the content. And then it comes with five bottles of different colored sprinkles. So what we'll do inside the case, lay down our paper, and then put the tube of sprinkles in. And then we're going to release these sprinkles to get onto our sheet of paper. And we're going to sprinkle our shake. And then after we're all done and it makes real pretty yellow on that glue there, then all of our sprinkles can go back inside the sprinkle bottle that it originally came into. And mom will be thrilled because this is a less mess way to play with sprinkles. That is very clever. You have your sprinkle art. Okay. And the only thing we did is before the camera ran is we ran the glue over the outline there. This is what it looks like. And when is it coming? It will be out in retailers uh, beginning in August. And it'll retail for? $19.99. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's great. Sprinkle Art Shaker. Uh, I like it a lot. Okay. Okay. My only question was uh, yes. how, how to taste. Were there good sprinkles, <laughs> bad sprinkle, like... Stale sprinkles. I think so the kind sprinkles. that you eat. Yeah, not edible <laughs> yeah. sprinkles. Uh, okay, so sense. actually, we did this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's out. It just has twelve reviews so far. Uh, it's tw it is twenty bucks, as she said, nineteen ninety nine. And there's a tiny little forty second video there, Chad, because it's kind of interesting how carefully this lady does it. Yeah, compared to uh, the they, they show. show you exactly what's in the kit, so this is good. And they are, it's not quite as small as glitter, it sounds like. It's no, it, it, it's a Yes, it, it is spring. Exactly. Got exactly. It. So you get the little glue sticks. And, you know, she said when you run out of the their uh, little paintings, just use any paper you want. But now that I'm watching it, I, I'm thinking if you have a lot of kids, I guess the thing is before you run out of those things is, is to... Uh, photocopy them run them through your printer your, your scanner a couple <laughs> yes. times so you have tons of them yeah uh and it, i think it's very clever it's a very clever just let them yeah make make up yeah. stuff they don't yeah draw a cat in glue and then yeah, that's neat i like it i like it that's very, very um cool. and uh, definitely a lot cleaner i like that you can also uh, it looks like you could just empty the whole bottle in there, and then whatever doesn't stick just goes straight back into the bottle. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you screw the bottle in the side. Yeah. And then hold it up, and the bottle's open, and it. Yeah, it's a very clever idea. I like uh, it. Crayola Sprinkle Art Shaker, that is out, and our third thing is from Wowie, and this is it. Wowie. Oh my God, an art launcher. We love art. Uh, uh, tell me about this artistic gadget. It's great to see you at Sweet Sweet here. And uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the Art Launcher 3000. Um, it blasts a burst of color like you've never seen before about from like just 10 feet away. And it'll just color your world. It'll be so amazing. Absolutely. Well, not really, Dick. It's really the Fart Launcher 3000, and you're it. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Get ready for a smell. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Dick. I know. I hope we're still friends for the next show. 
<laughs> but maybe we'll do an art launcher next time. But this is you may have to pass on this gadget next yeah. time. Oh, it that's comes very out funny. For Christmas, it's nineteen ninety nine. It's pretty. It's pretty nasty, but it's pretty cool. And how much does it sell for? Nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. And uh, do you have to put new smellums in it? It has a canister that it comes with, with about a hundred or so blasts, and then they're available also separately too. Okay. Yes. And the name of the company is Wowie. Oh, this is part oh, of. It still reeks. <laughs> oh, boy. Not the company. No. The uh, the art launcher with an F. Yes. Okay. Hey, thanks, Dave. Hey, okay. Thanks, Dave. Have a good sweet sweet. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I bet the booths next to them were really oh, uh, excited. <laughs> yes, that's very funny. That's very funny. Uh, now, so wait, I, I gotta know. Dis describe. Yes. Was it like? <laughs> or just it, it, like it, it's it's pretty. No, it's it's pretty gross. Now, uh, wow. Dave's telling me that they it's a concoction of vegetables that they mix together. Maybe maybe they just leave vegetables on the shelf to rot. <laughs> <laughs> and put it in a canister. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's so they're, pretty terrible. This is what it would, if a vegan farted, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, so, there we go. Something, something just like that. Oh. Uh, now, I don't know if they changed their mind, because again, when I got back from the uh, event, I found an old press release from Toy Fair, who said it's packed with both the dreadful smell and a canister of bubblegum smell. Oh. So maybe uh, during Toy Fair, they thought, no one's interested in the bubblegum smell. Let's just leave that out. And <laughs> they did the A-B the... test, and people <laughs> always went for the fart smell. Yes, they, uh, they said, no, this is very 2019. Put the <laughs> yucky stuff in there. Um, so it's coming in October. They say age is six and up. Although at six, you can create, <laughs> you know, you don't need the gun. You can no. just create your own. Uh, you I can am do it glad live. that this was not like if you were to say, okay, describe the gadget that is a fart launcher. I would, I'm glad that they went the, the route of it's a sterilized in a can fart. <laughs> it's not yes. like. Yes, it's not, no consistency that you can see. <laughs> yes, it, it's, exactly. It's hidden, hidden from view. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and and the, it's branded Buttheads. That's what when I said, what company is it? This, I didn't realize it was Wowie, Wowie also uh, owned uh, Buttheads. Um, okay. So that uh, October. Oh, my gosh. All right. Those are my three gadgets. We're, we're ready. We are jumping in to... That new... Ever since you booted that computer, it's really running at... Uh, it's overclocked by three times. <laughs> exactly. I can't believe... It. We're like <laughs> 18 minutes into the show, and we're on the Chad's Crappy Corner. Here we go! You don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. No. Get it. Get it. So this is a very small, inconspicuous, and remember this uh, theme is sketchy gadgets. Sketchy, nefarious, kind of spy-esque uh, could also be uh, to describe this. So I recorded this gadget just earlier, so I'll reveal it there. <laughs> Hey diggity, I'm coming to you from the, the Minecraft set, obviously. But we're gonna be taking a look at this week's creepy, surreptitious, interesting gadget, and that is a USB stick. No, uh, this is, a, this. if you found this plugged into your computer, you might be a little bit freaked out, I'll be honest. But this is a key logger, a USB key logger, and this should be able to surreptitiously record every key press that I do on my keyboard when it's when you plug the keyboard into one side and then it, the other side into the computer. This is all of the gadgets. So on one end there's a USB and the other end is another USB and that would sit in between your keyboard. And they do offer, you know, pretty pretty interesting uh pre pretty good instructions. I I was surprised at how packed the instructions are in here. They also offer you, uh, right on the back, a user guide with a QR code. And so I thought there weren't any instructions before I opened up the package. So I pulled up the instructions here on my phone as well. So uh, you got a whole bunch of different ways to get instructions. 
Here is what the instructions actually look like. Uh, I don't know why they use this laptop that looks like it was made in 1980. Uh, but <laughs> I, this is this is everything. So it tells you uh, how it's all going to work. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see how it 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 responds. How how it performs. Okay, first impression is that uh, I have an Alienware keyboard with all the lights and stuff, Ooh. and everything seems to be uh, just peachy, like it's passing through enough power and everything to power the keyboard as it normally would. Now, the first key thing that I have to do is KBS. Not sure if that's supposed to stand for anything, like keyboard shortcut, maybe, K KBS. So we're gonna hit KBS. And this is how you unlock time. the device. Nothing happened. <laughs> Press and hold the see. keys together for flash drive. The mode. internals. Oh, I did it. Oh, my keyboard just turned off. Okay. There's a new, okay, there's a new USB. Okay, there's a new drive on the uh, computer. So now there's this new USB drive. Does my keyboard actually work right now? It doesn't. <gasps> my keyboard's oh. broken. Uh. So if you want to type anything, uh, can't have a second keyboard. Whoa. But anyway, uh, here you can see the config file. So there's two modes. The instructions mention uh, what you might change in here. So you can change the, the password around. So if I don't want keyboard shortcut, uh, that was the thing I made up. Uh, if you don't want that to be your password anymore, uh, okay, disable everything. Okay, very good, very good. Let's see what the log uh, in my PC, pa it's a little small, but it's basically know, empty I, at the moment because I, I didn't really type it. And then anything. you also have this layouts.zip, which is all the various different types of keyboards that you might have. So if you have a Portuguese Brazilian keyboard, you can use that. And then oh if I hit gosh. Key, KBS, does it exit out of keyboard? How do I get my keyboard back? <laughs> I need my keyboard back. <gasps> I haven't gotten, I haven't figured out how to get, get it ejected yet, but the user guide in here has a lot more information than that quick start guide. So if you need to know a lot more information, here it all is. So I just unplugged and plugged it back in to uh, get this back. And we're gonna just start typing out some phrases to actually test the key logging ability of the keyboard. Okay, now that I've done that for a bit, Key B is KBS. So I made the text a little bit larger so that you can actually see it. Uh, and this was from before. This was also me trying to set it up, but this is when I just started the test right now. Hi, this is a test of the keyboard. Enter uh, control T, that's me opening up a new tab. Hi, the Gizwiz, enter again. I tabbed a whole bunch of times to get to the search wow. field. What? A hip hells, I mean, he's typing out incorrectly. <laughs> when I delete, delat, del eat, uh, back, 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 back. I backspaced a whole bunch and then try to do happens again, but <laughs> failed just as miserably and hit back and hit enter. And then I typed out my password is one space, two space, three space, four, five. Uh, and hit enter, and then this was me getting back into the keylogger. So you can see just how powerful a keylogger can be, that this is literally everything that I just typed on my keyboard. I am a little frustrated. Every time I do this, I have to go back there and unplug and replug the thing in. So this is the keylogger that I ended up buying. This is the 16 megabyte version, and I know 16 megabyte bytes seems very, very, very small. Like That seems insignificant compared to the gigabytes of data that we normally get on USB keys. But the fact that this is only saving plain text means that that is an awful lot of plain text. So I don't think that you're going to run into any issues. Now the reviews are not so great. Not really sure why, because it seems perfectly fine for me. Some people are saying complete garbage. This person is trying to work with it on Linux. I could imagine Linux possibly not loving the file system or something like that. So on a Windows PC, it seems to work just great. And I'm definitely gonna keep this thing unplugged. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really feel comfortable having this plugged into my computer. <laughs> Who knows where it's going uh, or what else they put on this thing. Um, now, uh, it does not capture 
ma mice strokes. It does not capture anything that your mouse would uh, click and point. Um, and also, if you happen to have a password manager like LastPass, where it will either autofill in the data or you, you can copy and paste uh, the password, although having a password in your clipboard uh, has been said many times to not be a great thing. Um, but it, it won't capture any of that either. It won't capture any of your password managers. Uh, it may capture the master password because you actually type it on the keyboard. So remember, this only records things that happen through the connection from the keyboard to your computer. So everything else is safe. Uh, and also, this this device does not have any way to remotely access uh, it. This is all physical access, so you have to, if you were actually going to do something where you wanted to figure out your spouse's password or something, you have to plug it into their computer, leave it there for a while, then go and grab it again, grab the physical device, and then look at what uh, the contents are on your computer later. And that could also be an awful lot of digging and like random things, with, you know, you have to look at all the random stuff that they typed before they got to their password. And Waffles will just not leave me alone. So back to you <laughs> and the studio. Oh, and it costs 30 bucks. Back to you and the studio. There we go. So that is the key logger. Uh, and I didn't do a great job of explaining, but basically there's two modes. There's recording mode and then there's actually seeing what's on the device. So that's when I was hitting KBS, that's why I was I was switching out of the recording mode so that I could actually look at everything that had been saved on it. So it doesn't, once you plug it in, it doesn't like show up as a new USB device. You have to hit the KBS before it does that. <clears throat> so not really reviewed super great on Amazon, although I didn't have any issues with it. $30 seems expensive for what it is. It seems like you could make one of these for like way cheaper, but I really didn't find one for much cheaper than 30 bucks. So. If you're looking for a key logger, here's one. <laughs> there you go. Or, or, or by the end of the show, Captain J will have one for 86 right. cents. <laughs> yes, on Alibaba. Yes, exactly, exactly. And obviously, there is... It's no called Key Grabber, right? Key grab. Well, this one's called Key Logger, but on Amazon... Oh, okay. Amazon I noticed when you brought it up, it said Key, key Grabber. Yes, uh, yes. So here but it's, it's called... The same, it's the same thing. Then. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. But you're correct. Like, here it says Key Logger. Here it says Key Grabber. Um, and it is, it is Prime, so that's kind of nice. But uh, obviously, there's not really a nice, reputable company that you can buy these things from. So there's many people in the chat saying, now you have malware, which could very much be true. <laughs> Luckily, there was nothing I had to install in order to look at the stuff that I didn't have to go through that process. But still, you're plugging a physical device into your physical computer and there's a good chance that something, <laughs> you know, I have well, no idea. <laughs> I, I think when you just type three sentences and you looked and found that there were 97 uh, entries on the key logger, <laughs> that there was more more in there right. than you figured. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That is my nefarious, creepy, scary, sketchy gadget for Very Chad's sketchy. crappy <laughs> corner. Uh, with that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In this gadget warehouse. Far on. So Adam Jacowento. Jacowento. It's J-A-K-O-W-E-N-K-O. -E Adam, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so Adam writes, Dick and Chad... I purchased a product I'd seen in action at someone else's home. It worked really well, and I thought, I'm going to buy one of those. I'm going to make a video and then uh, send it in. So I purchased one on my own, but it does not work for me. Once you see the product, I'll explain why. So he didn't make a video, but we're going to count this as his video and send him a mad and a Alfred thing. So run the video of what the thing does. Here it goes. Messy splatters. Exploding sauce. Mystery goo you can't wipe off. 
Yuck! Stop cooking without a cover. Get Hover Cover, the revolutionary splatter guard that uses microwave-safe plastic magnets, so it's always ready to use. That's right, specially designed polymer magnets hold the Hover Cover up here until you need it down there. Just pull down to cover. When you're done, lift and let it hover. Hover Cover will stick and stay right in the microwave. Just think of the time and mess you'll save. Ugh, oh, that container might be microwave safe, but you can't find the lid any place. But Hover Cover is always where you need it, like a storage door in your fridge. Hover Cover upgrades your microwave with a lid. Plus, Hover Cover is large enough to fit most dinner plates, dishes, bowls, and even platters. And Hover Cover still fits in virtually any microwave. It's perfect for mess-free after-school snacks, reheating leftovers without the spillovers, and easy meals on the go. Virtually any microwave. Okay, so which microwave did it not work? Okay, in? so he said, basically it's a nifty gadget, but 100% of the gadgety aspect relies on the interior of your microwave being magnetic. I discovered mine is not, so I have to return this. I thought I, I would recommend it for you or anyone else who can check ahead of time that their microwave is magnetic. Um, he said, I guess I should have done that before I ordered it. Now, I noticed on Amazon, you, you know, I always thought every microwave oven was metal inside. Yeah, me too. I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, what? I know. But so I, I, uh, after I read that, I immediately thought, you know, before the show, let me get a magnet and go into my two microwaves and both of mine are magnetic. But I noticed that the very first thing, when you go to Amazon, uh, it says, please check that your microwave is magnetic before ordering this device. Huh? Yeah. Look at this. I oh, see the very first thing kindly yeah. note. So a uh, chat room, does anybody, uh, someone is saying, oh, all right. Pack NW says his microwave of an interior is plastic. Plastic. Interesting. Oh, well, uh, you know, it just, just break the roof of your, uh, oven off and put it down over the plate. You'll, it's like yeah. having a free, a free one of these. <laughs> Can't you just pop the insert out and just throw that into the, <laughs> into the, you know, uh, dishwasher? Which yeah. is, I, I I actually have one of these and I you like have it. one of those yeah 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 oh, in fact, okay we may we may or may not have already covered this on the show did you do it yeah oh my <laughs> god oh Chad I can't believe it we've covered a lot of gadgets on this show yeah so. but you know what <laughs> so they've worry. added more magnets go back to the, with that picture from my website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have three magnets. Yeah, look at that. Oh, no, oh, no, your hand is in there. Yeah, maybe. Okay, the, yeah. okay. Yeah, I don't yeah, even think okay. that's my photo. I think this is just a press Oh, from photo. them? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, the okay. one thing that weirdly I do remember vividly about this product is that when you got it, you'd unwrap it, and there was this whole page sheet about if you wanted to litigate against them, how you would go through with litigation. <laughs> Like, what? I haven't I thought it was warranty information or something, and I look and it's like how to litigate against hover cover. And I was like, huh? You guys are expecting what? this so much that you sh ship a sheet with <laughs> litigation instructions? Um Oh my god. Yeah, I remember that very vividly about the hover cover. But I, I it, mine has been sitting in my microwave. Uh oh my sometimes I find that bowls and soups i don't know if i just happen to have tall bowls but it sometimes has to rest on the edge of the bowl where it's not actually on the ground and sometimes the top of it can kind of dip into the bowl so uh i tend to not use it with soups all that much which is kind of a bummer because that's one of the first that's things the main that thing right yeah, yes exactly. yes exactly um but for for leftovers like spaghetti and and that sort of stuff uh it works it works pretty good. The one issue is that now you have just a dirty hover cover instead of a dirty inside of the microwave. Uh, and your kind of your first impression is, well, let me just slap it back up at the top of the microwave because that's how it's done. But really, you need to go now wash that in the washing machine before you throw it back uh, up in the microwave. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, I think you sort of have to have a fairly large microwave, right? Because, like... I have two microwaves. One of them is very small. If I put the hover cover in there, I could just slide a dish with maybe an inch of stuff on it that yeah. would be able to fit under the, uh, is it like what, three it's, inches high or so? Uh, yeah, but I, I would say three to two and a half, you know, two to two okay. and a half to three. Okay. Um, okay. 
it also, I mean, it comes out really easily. So if you had to like, oh yeah, it on I and shove it back in, right. I, I haven't had any issue. And I had a smaller microwave, and I, I don't remember it being an issue either. It, it, it comes across as bigger in the commercial than it really is. Because I mm -hmm. have normal dinner plates that it like rests on. Uh, that it's so I, I think it comes across as much larger than it actually is, uh, which has been kind of my biggest frustration is it's not quite large enough, but, um, but whatever. You know, I could also see this being a great like third party product where they make exact dimensional hover covers that are like maybe also square that would like perfectly fit in your microwave and, and lower oh, down. Oh yeah, okay. You know, as, yeah. if you had some customization with, with it, I think that would be really nice, but this one's one size fits all. Well, when I saw the paper clips, I thought they could also sell it as a, a desk organizer. Yeah, it'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or yeah. maybe a oh, you know, you know, show. if when you when you drop nuts and bolts under yeah. the sofa, <laughs> there you go. And hover cover is also a way to retrieve nuts and bolts. Just throw it under the so far on a string and there you go there you go i thought this was going to be a gadget for astronauts oh, so that you it's can, you know <laughs> it's, turn it over and it's a bowl that's magnetic oh it's <laughs> only seven bucks yeah it's only seven bucks it's pretty good that, uh, that's very decent yeah at first i was impressed uh captain jay said i found it for three dollars on uh but for three bucks, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, four dollars well, you get two day shipping. You know. Yes, Think exactly. And, exactly. And this is something that I'm. It's hard to point out. Is basically there's these grooves here that your fingers go into, but the the dig in it goes down, and that's what gets in my soup. <laughs> is oh oh I see. Is uh, this is the underside of it, and you can barely see at the bottom of those grooves. Those are actually protruding down into the dome of the hover cover. And so that is kind of what falls into my soup. That's the one design aspect. And it could be bigger uh, for my microwave, I guess. All right, so a question from the chat room. Is it dishwasher safe? I did it. <laughs> Didn't melt. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was fine for me. I don't know what the official word is. Uh, if it's safe for microwaves, you would think. Uh, that yeah, it's that's safe true. For that, that's true. Yeah, you know, yeah. Although it's a different right. type of heat. Um, so yeah, but there's also you could easily find it probably for cheaper because there are lots of knockoffs. Oh my gosh! Lots of knockoffs, and so you could probably find something else that would fit um, your budget if seven dollars is. Too expensive. It's too too pricey. <laughs> well, Adam, we're going to count that as a video for you since you went out and bought it with the express intention of making a video. Uh, right. So you'll get a Mad Magazine and an Alfred E. Newman uh, picture. And uh, assuming you live in the U.S., anybody can do that. Make a video for us. We prefer a video that, that you make. Um, and <clears throat> put it on YouTube anywhere from one to three minutes. Anything about a gadget, new, old, we love old gadgets. We love gadgets of things you have in the cellar that you haven't used in uh, 30 years, but you can't throw it away because it meant a lot when it was new. Make a video, put it on YouTube. You can click on list it if you only want people with the URL to see it. Send us that URL, mail at gizwiz.tv. And if we show the video, and as I often state, 99.99% .99 of the videos we show um, on the show. And if you live outside of the U.S., I'll autograph one of those Alfred E. Newman photos, uh, send you a high-res file so that you can print it out no matter where you live. And so the final get word, those videos in. The final word, it is dishwasher safe here. I found Oh my gosh. Found oh my it. gosh. Dishwasher safe. So Well, I may Fine invest word. the seven bucks. There you go. With that, let's move on to the letter. So this is very funny because last week we had a letter uh, uh, about a gadget that was very bizarre. It was the magnetic dart collector. Okay. Right. It was the, Ma they were um, 
ma uh, nerf darts, nerf nerf gun darts. Nerf darts, right? That uh, would have magnets in them, so you could pick it up. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, hi, Dick and Chad. Uh, the viewer letter for episode seven, uh, t uh, 1738 described the Indigo project for magnetic dark pickups. I searched for the product on Indigo. I couldn't find it. Um, I went to the show notes. It wasn't there, but it was at gizwas.biz. I clicked on it. I got page not found. Where did it go? Wow. The page you're looking for is no longer um, available. Is this a conspiracy on politicians <laughs> who don't want to see a quick reload Nerf gun? Uh, I love the show. Paul Coeber, he may be in the chat room. Yeah. He's Paul PC in chat. And I but can confirm. I not go there. only No. And in the original letter, there were two other places that talked about it. All of those links lead to page not found. Wow. Now we don't, uh, uh, all I remember from last week and, and um, I, I didn't have a screenshot of it was that they only, I don't know how many thousands of dollars they were looking for, but <laughs> they, they only, they ha only had $710. Yeah. But I think they had 19 days left, but maybe they figured <laughs> yeah. we haven't gotten a penny in three weeks. Yeah. Why don't we just, Shut it down. Uh, bail, bail this it is out some good that. investigative reporting on our part. This yes, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Uh, so, Paul, or Paul CG, thank you for that. But then we get another letter, very rare, about the same thing. Dick and Chad, hi. Ben Heck, H-E-C-K, modified a Roomba to collect Nerf dots in 2015. There's a three-part video on YouTube I actually found the video, and we'll just show like a minute of it because uh, if you go and start it like at a uh, 15 minutes in, you'll see that it sort of works okay. Uh, but who knew that picking up Nerf dots was such a big deal? Yeah, apparently that ev everybody who's into Nerf it just hates picking up the dart. I can see after a while it gets. If you're really, if you're a Nerf connoisseur, um, yeah, that would well, that would get frustrated. Evidently, the people in this office have Nerf uh, Nerf gun fights, and they're all over the place. And so he asked this guy, "What can he do?" So he takes an iRobot, and he does. You could play sound for like thirty seconds here. This is where he says what he does. We modified it so we can actually pick up darts. Oh wow! Instead of dirt. So is that different than a regular Roomba? We're actually using the same code. We tried using image sensing to find things, but we didn't really have the time to finish that. And these darts are kind of small and a lot of the colors just don't pick up very well, especially the blue, which apparently is most of your darts. Mm. Let's fire this thing up. Roomba, do what must be done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. What? Don't hit me. Roomba, look at that. It oh, doesn't, oh, to, to, to me, it doesn't seem like it's picking so. up dozens so. of them. No. <laughs> Seems pretty inefficient to me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And a Roomba's like three hundred bucks, isn't it? Yeah, those are not cheap. Um, well, yeah, huh? It's trying to clean That's so clever. So I mean, now I'm wondering which one's better, magnetic or Roomba? Like, which one would you rather buy? <laughs> I would. Uh, I don't. Well, if you have a Roomba, someone like you, well, he shows now how many he picked up. Um, yeah, I doubt if they're going to use this in their like advertising. A hack and a half, though. Um, Wait, that's pretty good. Would you just put them on the ground? What was the whole point? <laughs> oh my gosh, these guys. Go, right? I guess when you have um, robots to do it for you, you can just. Anyway, and also uh, whoever wrote the uh, second letter, I'm sorry, I somehow cut your name off. I thought, <laughs> I thought your name was Ben Heck, and I realized Ben Heck was the guy who made that video. <laughs> So if you're in the chat room, tell me that you were the one that found out about the rumba video. Um, chat room says, three hundred bucks, I could hire a kid for a year <laughs> to pick them, pick them up for less than that. I wonder if I could train waffles to pick up Nerf darts. 300, buck, 300 bu bucks worth of training? I think that might be what I need oh, to invest oh, maybe, in. Maybe, maybe. 
<laughs> we want to give a big thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. That's our Patreon page. Thank you guys so, so, so much for supporting <coughs> our show so far. If you have supported in the past or are supporting now or plan on supporting, thank you. Big thank you. Thank you so much for helping our show be completely independent. No network needed here at Gizwiz. Uh, thank you so much for your support and generosity. And if you love the Gizwiz, please consider giving back. If Patreon's not your deal, you want to use PayPal instead, head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon tab, and click the PayPal link there on that page. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that is where we are live. We're live right now, in fact. There, there we are. Uh, and you can watch the show live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. We don't have a whole bunch of schedule changes coming up soon. If there are, is a schedule change, it'll be right here at the top of the website. And then also all of our past episodes. And also you can subscribe on iTunes. We also have an RSS feed or on YouTube. So you can never miss, never miss a Gizwiz again. So we hope, <laughs> we hope that you do that. Also, head on over to gizwiz.biz. That's Dickie D's site. He writes up fantastic articles about all of the gadgets that we talk about on the show. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? This is the game show online. This is the gadget, the whole gadget. Nothing but the gadget. Uh, and this is obvious. It's obvious. I mean, it's just, this is just obvious. Uh, there's a little area for a hose to go in. Uh, and this is definitely a water pick for rhinoceroses or big, big mammals. Wow. You know? Wow. Just anything that needs a huge, has big teeth, just put up a garden <laughs> hose onto that. It's a water pick for those guys. If you think you know what this is, get a guess and over at gizwiz.biz. There are six mad magazines for correct answers, but there are double the mad magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. So get a guess and over at gizwiz.biz. Don't forget, we mentioned it last week, we mentioned it at the beginning of the show, we do have a meetup happening September 29th at Disneyland. If you would like to show up, that's in New York, New York, by the way. If you would like yeah. to show up, please email Dickie D and uh, we'll give you all the details. Um, I think... You can use mail at gizwiz.tv for that. Mail oh, and Andrew Forte was the man who sent us the letter Perfect. about the rumba uh, that could pick up darts. From Andrew, F-O-R-T-E, thank you. From Mr. Heck there. Thank you so yes, much for, yes, for Mr. that. Heck. Mr. Heck's video. <laughs> so, hey, if you can make it out uh, September 29th, New York, New York, we would love to see you there. It's always a fantastic time. I'll be there in person. We play games, we give gadgets away. I might try to, I might have to fly Southwest to bring some gadgets that I can give away myself. <laughs> Two bags fly free. Uh, so I oh, can wow, yes, stuff out. yes. Uh, with that, and, and that we'll, about, we'll oh. stream part of it. We yes, will stream we will. part of it for people uh, who we can't will. make it out there. We will, we will. Um, with that, I think that's about it for our show. So we'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs>